Hello everybody and welcome back. The Carnifex project is finally starting to draw to a close. Um, as I said in the last video, I would finish off doing all of the armor plates, they're all done and complete. I do have a couple of Carnifexes on the go at the same time, so I've even had a little practice of the exoskeleton just before I've started um, doing this guys. That's what we're going to work on today, we're going to get the exoskeleton done. Um, We'll see what time we've got, we may move on to the claws, but I've got a very good idea that with my speed of painting, that will be another video. Um, but we're so close now to getting this guy done, so without further ado, to the table! Well, here we are, back at the table again, and uh, I am so pleased with how this model is coming on. It is looking sexy. Um, finished all the plates, as promised, and it is looking good. So today what we're going to do is we're going to work on the exoskeleton, do all the chests, um, we'll work on the arms up to the weapons, we'll try and get the tail and the legs done as well, we'll see how we go. Um, I don't really anticipate getting onto the uh, weaponry yet, but we are very close to getting this, this miniature done. Previously uh, we did do the exoskeleton, we painted a black and a green layer, um, so that's Vallejo dark green and Vallejo black mixed together, you can already see that layer there. So what we'll do is we'll reactivate that by just going over with the dark green um, and then we'll move on to doing shading and going around the model. So simply to start with, we're going to start with uh, Game Color by Vallejo, dark green as promised. Um, we shall grab the model, wet the brush first, just make sure um, the brush is moist and in other preparatory manoeuvres, piece of uh, Kitchen roll, um, ready for cleaning the brush and just wiping off things like that. Um, so, re wet the brush and just lick off the excess. And I'll just bring the miniature into focus for you. Um, so, what we'll do is we'll start work on this top piece of muscle work on the arm here and we'll literally draw just some. Um, straight lines across the muscle in the flow of the muscle so that what we're doing is right from the beginning as we normally do right at the beginning we start to build up preparatory work for the upper layers and so what we're doing is building in the texture already nice stripes we'll go around the edges of the vents get those stripes in there and we're looking for around, on the upper surfaces, we're looking for around about an 80% coverage. So just the very recesses we're going to leave black, or the dark green black that we painted earlier. Um, some straight lines down the muscle again, give it that texture, that, that um, idea that there's a, a sarcomere of muscle hiding beneath what we're painting. Okay, and then for the exoskeleton itself, like I said, we've already got a layer of dark green on there. Uh, so we'll just catch a further focus. And any of the upper surfaces, 80% coverage on the upper surfaces, the rib spaces will leave the dark colour. And it is literally just working our way around the model on these upper surfaces. Now, I don't know if you can see in there just here, there's a little scratch and the paint, the, um, the grey of the model has actually come back through. So what we'll do to correct that, so, because as you're handling your model, you may make the odd little dink here and there, is we'll get a bit of the black, mix it in with the green, and the black will just give us a straight away cut, like instant coverage. So you can see that little grey spark just lying there. There's actually another one over here which we'll get rid of. And the green just straight away instantly is gone and then uh, sorry the black instantly is gone and then we will put the layer of green gently over the top and then back to coverage so we're 80 percent across the upper surfaces i'll work my way around the model and then we'll come back and see what it looks like these first two, two steps so the black green um, and the next layer the dark green on top you really 
to start with, it looks like your model isn't changing, but this preparation is going to give the pop for these brighter colours that come in later. So um, whether you're doing reds, whether you're doing blues, whatever colour you're doing, those underlying hues are what gives you your continuity through your model and gives you that pop at the final end. So try and be patient with your models, try and build up the layers. Don't just try and go for like a single flat coat and then just do highlights around it. You'll not get the depth, you'll not get the immersion in your miniature. Um, so try and be patient and get those layers on there guys and, and just work with your model. Right, so I'll work away, my way around the rest of the bit of the beast and then we shall be back shortly. So you can clearly see that we've now got um, green all the way around the upper surfaces and it's the dark green by Vallejo all the upper surfaces of the chest cavity and I've concentrated on this arm section here and the muscul musculature um, between the two claws. Um, I'm going to concentrate on this area, do both sides of the chest as well Ooh, if we can see into there very well um, and then what I will do is once I've gone through that with you I will then move on to the rest of the model at my leisure um, and then we can come back in the next video and uh, start to tidy up. So I've added a little bit of lime green to the palette and we're going to move the lime green and the dark green in together uh, to give us our um, main primary colour. I'll bring a little bit more over. Clean the brush. Wipe off the excess. Clean again. And you can see on here, the first clean there was quite some heavy staining, so definitely needed another clean. And then what we can do is concentrate the brush towards the tip. We'll wipe off the excess and I introduce to the model. So if I bring it into focus again for you, what we'll do is we'll try now to think about where the light is hitting and then just reconcentrate those muscle threads onto those upper surface areas. Try and get a better angle for you. And this is probably going to take two or three layers. So what I've done is I've laid down the first layer, which is fairly transparent. I'm not going to go back to it. I'm going to move to a different area. And what I'm allowing for is a little bit of drying time. Because what we will find is if we paint the same area, and I've mentioned this before, but if we paint the same area over and over, rather than actually lay down more paint and get more opacity, we end up lifting the paint off in little chunks and uh, giving ourselves an irregular uh, paint surface to work with. Just try and get a bit better focus for you there. We'll just do just around the vent. Catch the edge of that muscle there. And then as we hit these edges, just use the edge of the brush just to get a little bit of a layer on there. And then for the ribs, um, what we're going to do is we're going to quite, because it's the the model's overhanging the rib cage, um, it would be actually quite hard for light to get in here. So what we're going to do is really hyper focus the areas where the light would be. So I'm going to catch on this top rib. Now, although there wouldn't be a great deal of light here, um, I will introduce a little bit of cartoony tightness to the to the miniature. I will leave it darker the deeper we go in. Um, and you'll see what I mean by cartooniness as we actually start to um, finish the ribs off because it won't be quite true lighting. It's going to be more emphasizing it for where we want to show off. So 
each of these root um, sections I'm going to catch individually and run a little bit of light up onto the rib itself and then catch the next rib section and then we'll come down onto the very final one where there is a lot more light actually going to catch because the bottom area is a bit more exposed to access by the light. These horns at the front I'm just painting the top edge and down the sides to give it that idea of overhanging shadow. Um, down the side a little bit to the prominence at the bottom. And then we'll come down the front edge of the rib where the light would catch. And then onto the bony section, down the side where the light would catch. Catch all that bit. Same again on the next one, that front edge and the main part and then the bony prominence at the bottom. Right, so I'll, I'll stop there with those ribs. I will work over the rest in a second, but we're going to put a second coat on to now bring the colour a bit more to the fore. So we will just re-go, because we should have had a little bit of drying time now. Shouldn't be lifting paint off now. We'll just recover the areas where we've been and make that colour a little bit prouder. And if you notice, I'm just now going to the middle of the rib and the prominence down this edge here and the upper, more on the upper surface area. More on that front edge of the rib. So although I've actually introduced more colour on the first pass, I'm now focusing it a little bit where the light would be. And it will give you a bit more of an idea of a blend when you're viewing the miniature once it's finished. And we're building up the layers. But you can see what I am doing is I'm slowly working through the layers. We'll now move back to the arm and we'll do the muscle again. Uh, another stripe across the muscle, this time focusing more and more on those upper surface areas where the light would catch. Onto this bicep. And then on the edge here where the joints meet. That edge there down the side, reinforce the muscle at the back, move it a little bit more into the shadow and catch that edge there with the side of the brush. So swapping our techniques slightly as we work our way around the different areas, trying to make sure that we get good coverage on all the areas. And it's going to be hard to show you inside there for the camera angle and my eye to be in the same place at the same time. Um, but you can see we're getting that coverage there. So I'll now cover all the rest of the ribs, this arm, and then I'll come back. Okay, so we've now been around the model. I've done the arm, uh, I've done both sides of the rib cage in this um, mixture of dark green and lime green, both by Vallejo. So the next thing we're doing, gonna do is go straight to the um, lime green on its own. Again, I've wet the brush and um, just licked it dry in my uh, mouth. Uh, and now we're going to drop to quite a small area of colour to start to make the upper surface areas pop um, and let you know where the light is striking from. And again, we're going to go a little bit cartoony in the fact that we're going quite high up here where there would be a lot of shadow cast. But what I want to do is get a real feel for this rib cage and give it some depth. Um, You'll see what I mean in a second. 
so just the upper surface areas and the further back we go just a little bit lighter paint will create a little bit of depth there and then what we're going to do as we come onto these ribs is we're going to cover the bottom portion of the rib where there's an arc on it more towards the front edge where the light would strike and then on the top of the rib just across that prominence and we're going to go down each rib and do the same and the importance of trying to do this all at one session I can't stress because um, these are quite bright colours and we want them to sink into each other and dull down a little bit so they're not devastatingly bright um, but you can see we're just starting to get a little bit of an effect now of the depth in the ribs and as we come on to the next portion of the ribs um, sort of working on to what I think would be the equivalent of a a Tyranid's um, super sternal notch and we'll just catch that front edge of that rib where the light would catch that bony bit of the top there and then we'll come down that line just a tiny line top edge of the rib again tiny line again top of the rib again Okay, and we'll do that all the way around all the ribs. Um, the arms, um, just get a bit more water on my brush. The paint's getting a little bit dry. The arms, uh, again, we're going to work on that musculature and try and get a, a bit of a lined effect on the muscles, but now on the higher surfaces. A little bit shiny. I'm just going to dim the light a little bit just to so you can hopefully see a little bit better what I'm painting. So on this upper surface area here, we'll slowly work in some stripes. And create a little bit of depth in the muscle. And then around this border here, where the vent will be when we get it painted. Just gonna have to clean my brush. I've got a little bit of a I don't know if you see it on the camera, let's have a look. The paint is just accumulating right on the tip where it's been drying. I've just got a little bit of a blob thing going on, so I'm just going to yoink that off the brush. Because it's just causing me a few little problems as we're working our way around. That should be a bit sharper edge to the brush now. So we can... Gently work on that line there. A little bit more over the top. And again on the bicep. We'll work on this upper edge. It's the light or the eye rather can see where the light is striking from. Okay, so if we move that away a little bit, we can start to see that that's creating the depth in the muscle tone, creating the depth in the rib cage, and now I'm gonna work my way around the whole of the model 
uh, and we'll come back up and look what it looks like before well sorry no I'm not going to work my way around the whole model I'm just going to work my way around this bit we're not at highlights yet um, so I'm just going to work my way around this bit and then we'll transition over to the um, yellow green prior to be working my way around the whole model so we're now starting to get very close to the highlights on the rest of the model um, can you just see inside there I have bothered with the inside of the arm as well and you may be thinking well what, how do you know where to pick to put the colour and it is just really if you've got a light source in the room as you can see here I mean as I'm sat painting it's not as obvious but the camera really picks up the reflections from the light and you can see that here around all these holes that's where the light's reflecting and that's where my light has gone so you, what you're doing in your head is you're imagining the light striking these upper surfaces on the edges of the prominences um, any sharp edge it would get delineated by a little line of uh, light and that's what your eye is searching for it's searching for those cues to tell you what the structure's shape is um, and you've got to help the eye read the model so what we're going to do is now the real highlights the real prominences the spiky bits we're going to give them a blob of um, the yellow green by Vallejo and just we need to really reduce the amount of area covered uh, as we come into these um, major highlights but we'll run along this top edge here because that would be the whole of that edge would be an area of brilliance um, and then we'll come we'll leave a little gap and then we'll come on to this upper surface on the arm here I'm just trying oh, sorry to take the camera out is what I was trying to do um, I'm trying to actually get you a better view let me just really get rid of that light so that's better okay and we got the focus as well so as we come in now we're going to take just a little line along this top edge and then and it's important to keep your brush wet all the time so you're getting some nice accuracy with your brush uh, we'll come on to this bottom edge here and the light would be coming in from above and to one side so each of these holes will catch from one side and also just do the bottom edge as well catch the top surface of that piece there we'll do the muscles as well and we'll catch right at the top of the muscle trying to maintain those little lines and then we'll go back in with the same colour but cover a little less area and it will just mean that the really high prominences do get popped So you can now see this upper arm here is really glowing with colour. We'll do the bicep to match it. So at the moment you can see the bicep looks a little bit dull, but if just along the top edge, we start to pop in a little bit of extra colour. Again, you can see it just really does give it a little bit of extra three dimension and we'll run a little bit more colour on that leading edge of the bone there, make that stand out. We've already done here, but I will just go on to the other side um, and give the front edge a little bit of a colour as well. 
Uh, the ribs themselves, we'll go back to the ribs. So we can see the ribs are, well, they're there, the green, but what we'll do is we'll make them pop a little bit. So, and what we'll do is we'll do the middle section of the ribs first, just so you can see in contrast um, those in comparison to the lower and the upper rib section. Tiny little bit on the rib. And then we'll pop a little line. So we're trying to get a nice thin brush. Pop a little line. So if you can compare that mid rib section with the top rib section, you can see there's a, a lot more of a brightness there just on the top surfaces. And we'll just put a little dink of color on this bottom edge. And you, like I said, the, the light really wouldn't strike here, but if I just put a little bit of color on that bottom edge, you can see it just really exaggerates the depth. And then finally, we'll go on to the bottom edge. And just on the top of that piece of bone there, let you know where the light is coming from. Top of there, little dink on here, down the edge. And if I compare the other side now, okay, so there we go, and turn it back around. And I think you can see we're just starting to really pop the ribs and make them stand out. Now, the other thing that I did do that I didn't tell you I'd done is all the carapace that we'd worked on earlier, once I'd completed it, I gave it some matte varnish. So that as we carry on working, I'm not pulling off all the paint we've just so lovingly spent the time on. So that has had a treatment of matte varnish just to protect it while we carry on working. I'm now going to finish off the arm, um, which really hasn't got a great deal to do. And then we'll come back and do the final highlights and then I can finish the model off. So I've now added in some Vallejo um, Bone white and that's going to get a little dab. I was a little keen with how much I applied but that was the bottle exploding on me but um, quite a lot of green a little bit of the white and this is really 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 now for the extreme highlights so when we come back to the muscle uh, we're just going to catch Just that top edge. We'll catch a little bit of the top edge here. Prominence is on the bone. Just a little dink of colour along the top here. And it really is just catching edges now. On the ribs, we're going to pick the ribs that are the most prominent. So the ones right at the front. Give them a little dab of colour on the edges. And that is about as much as we're going to do with that. So I'll now work my way. I keep saying this, I am really now going to work my way around the rest of the model to get it all complete and then we're ready for... Well, he is coming along so well. I am really, really, really pleased with how things are progressing with this miniature. 
Um, he's not going to win a gold or demon, but actually he's pretty good for the tabletop. Um, hope you've been enjoying the videos. Uh, hope you've been following along with me. Um, thank you if you have. And um, we'll be back very shortly. I'm going to do a video on how to do the blending for the tail. We'll do the horns, then we'll do the um, claws and the signing talons all in one. Um, there's a few other bits and bobs horn-wise around, but we'll encapsulate that in one video. There's the basing to do, and this miniature will then be battle ready. Really, really pleased with him. Um, hope you've enjoyed following the video so far, and um, over to the clothes, I suppose. Well, what a great session. Really enjoyed that. For the amount of figure that we've uh, actually got covered, really didn't take too long, maybe three and a half, four hours. Um, really pleased with how it's looking. It's starting to really come along now, be an excellent addition to the army. Um, if you're enjoying the channel, pre please do like and subscribe. Um, really helps grow the channel. Want to get lots more content out for you guys. Going to start to look at covering different armors again. Um, I've already got perhaps a suggestion in the pipeline, so you'll have to wait and see what that is once we've finished the Carnifex. Um, but I think maybe one, two videos and we're probably done with the Carnifex now. Um, been a, a, an absolute joy painting him, even if it's been a bit laboured getting in, in the sessions. Um, so hopefully we'll see you again soon. And only one thing left to say, of course. Are we painting minis yet? Hell yeah! Catch you in the next one.